Hi, everybody. Oh, wow, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome so much to the Napa Valley Film Festival's Culinary Stage. I am Amanda Haas, and I am here all weekend um, doing so many beautiful food, wine tastings, and connected with these great filmmakers. So I'm so excited for this one. This is Beth Hawk, the filmmaker from Breaking Bread, and we're going to watch a trailer before I introduce the chefs. the Sham Festival. I did not want to say Israel. I didn't want to say Palestine. I don't believe there is any room for politics in the kitchen. As someone that burned as a Palestinian and live here as an Israeli, this stuff make you confuse who you are, who you want to be. I don't give a f that he's Arab. Like, he doesn't give a f that I'm a Jew. The only thing we're going to give a f is about making art. What do you say? I want Arabic salad, I want Israeli salad. Who owns this salad? Sometimes you find yourself like thinking, what is politically correct to order? Ninety percent of people in Israel, they want to live together. And the 10 percent making it to the headlines. This is what's missing. We don't know each other enough. The difference between strangers to enemies is too small. <laughs> They should have given chefs to make peace in the world. Food can bring us together. No, food can bring the first step. So this is the only way, small steps. And from there, it's depend on what we choose. Ah, uh, you're, you're gonna use food to bring uh, world peace. No, I'm gonna use food to change a few people. That's it, but if you change a few people and other people would do the same, then maybe we will succeed together to do some kind of a huge change. So amazing. I don't think Stephanie, who put all of this together, she couldn't have found a better pair of people to bring together to have this conversation today. But the chefs I'd like to introduce are a husband wife team, Laura and Sayad Osil Mess. I know I'm butchering their name. So happy to have them. They are the restaurateurs and owners of Noosh in San Francisco. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so Hi. much for being here. <laughs> so fun to have them. And I think the thing that's amazing is we start to cook and they share their story of how they met, where they're from, and how they've traveled the world cooking. It's this beautiful segue into Beth's film, and there are some very similar stories to be told here today. So thank you all for being here. No, we're super excited to be here. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having us. So amazing. And then we're also going to pull Steve Green Greenberg into the conversation, who's here representing all of the beautiful wine labels from Treasury Wine. So you're tasting a Sauvignon Blanc with this, and we'll get into that as we eat as well. But friends, I know that this is Middle Eastern food that you've landed on. That's yeah. right. Right? They met at the Culinary Institute of America in New York five years ago? That's yeah, right. about five years ago. We met at the CIA, yeah. actually. Uh, so I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico. Uh, I cook in one of the best restaurants in the world. Yes. We were like going for fine dining. We wanted to do, uh, you know, just get out there, try to meet chefs, try to learn as much as we can. And then uh, actually I knew of the only Turkish guy or Middle Eastern yeah. person that was at school, and I said, I have to meet him. 
Six months later, he proposed me. No. Six <laughs> months. Six months I later, actually, after a month, he moved in with me, and I was like, okay, this is too fast, but okay, let's do it. Whatever. <laughs> I found the gem. I had to act. Oh, I love it. I see. And then tell them how you spent your honeymoon. This is hysterical. So, uh, you know, they always say, uh, like, Middle Eastern people, Middle Eastern men find ways to put their women to work. So. <laughs> That was the case, so Sayad was thinking, okay, what are we gonna do for our honeymoon? And we ended up uh, working on 25 restaurants across the country. We were staging uh, one or two days and we decided to land in San Francisco. That's it. Now, now we are actually in San Francisco. When uh, you know, we opened our restaurant about eight months ago. And wow. This is our home. Yes. That's right. So, um, <laughs> I mean, my prerogative as somebody who's intellectually engaged in the community and the food world and everything was not pigeonhole ourselves into Middle Eastern cooking. Right. But, uh, you know, one of the things we found out on our uh, 25 restaurant stage trip was nobody <laughs> was, this was Laura's initiative. She's like, yes. Nobody's doing anything fun with Middle Eastern food. Why, why do you want to do farm to table and all this? Like, let's do focus it. on this uh, fun idea of cooking something Eastern Mediterranean mm -hmm. and uh, basically uh, crossing uh, uh, a lot of different cultures and celebrating the cuisine of the region without those boundaries that people, uh, you know, when I say people, I really mean the, uh, you know, Western imposition of borders to this uh, land that didn't have borders for a long time. Right. right. And, uh, you know, cultures that have coexisted for such a long time with conflict still, but they've co coexisted nevertheless. So we wanted to create, by her initiative, a cuisine <laughs> of an Eastern Mediterranean uh, that uh -huh. didn't exist previously. So, um, so you've done that here and at Noosh. And the restaurant in San Francisco, nothing on the menu is over $16. That's is that right? right? That's so right. it's very reasonably 19, priced as well, yes. which I love. But this, as we start to make, tell me what we're going to make today. And then I want to tell the story of why this is so appropriate that we yeah, do that. Of course. Go ahead. One of the things that, you know, uh, we always uh, did this uh, shared tasting menu uh, as, as a precursor to our restaurant, Noosh. Right. Uh, and everything revolved about around breaking bread. That's why I credit the culinary director of this uh, festival, Stephanie, uh, for pairing us with Beth's amazing uh, uh, movie yeah. Yeah. that, you know, we basically would come out in the beginning of uh, the whole meal and say, you know, this meal is about breaking bread and passing around uh, plates and sharing a meal together. Just as much as it's about, you know, the culinary experience that we're providing, it's about sharing as well. Yeah. And that, that is why I think it's so appropriate that, you know, we're paired with this movie and uh, uh, the festival that it is showcasing. Um, do you want to talk about the dishes? Stuff? Yeah, you want yeah. to tell, what are we going to start making? So uh, I want you guys to try. So being a Mexican in California, in San Francisco, right. you know, we, and cooking Eastern Mediterranean food, uh, we get to find the best ingredients. We have to find the best way yes. to show it to people. We want people to be able to have these dishes every single day. And that's right. how we want to do it at the restaurant. Okay. So uh, I want to show you how we do the falafels. I'm pretty sure all of you have ever had a falafel sometime in their lives. You know, sometimes they put flowers, they put so many ingredients. Uh, you give it a bite to a falafel, but you okay. never know what's in the falafel. Exactly. And so, so often, I was saying, I can't yes. have gluten, so boring. But they're like, when you're That's doing right. it the right way and you're not crowding it with other ingredients that are kind of just fillers, it's really clean. It's super clean, and there is over that. There is about 20 ingredients that go into the falafel. Wow. And the way that Middle Easterns, you know, elevate the food is by putting all these spices, all the flavors uh, that we want to showcase. And the way that we are showcasing, when you give it a bite, if you get a bite to your falafel right now, it's warm and fresh, oh, you so are good. able to see everything. You see the sesame, you see the herbs, you see the radishes and the red skin of the radishes. Beautiful. You see the red spice and the green spice okay. in it. So, you know, it's a simple food, use right. chickpeas and spices, but we want to show you what's in it. So, uh, I mean, I can explain to you. Please, yeah, share too how you, yes. sorry, what were you going to say? No, Go it's ahead. okay. I want to sort of uh, show, there's uh, functional reasons why a lot of these ingredients are in the falafel mix too. Uh -huh. So it's a very heterogeneous uh, uh, sort of mixture. Uh, when you look at it, it's like, I, you know, it's not going to stay together. But let me explain uh, uh, just the function.
together nevertheless. Um, I'm always going to So that. I'm glad it resonated with you guys, oh, too. But so, so the herbs are chopped rather than pureed. Okay. A lot of the falafel recipes look for chopped, uh, excuse me, pureed uh, herbs. So it all looks green, but we like the chopped herbs because it separates the grains of uh, oh, okay. uh, oh, yeah, home, uh, the chickpeas, <laughs> uh, you know, from clumping together. Got Same it. thing with the sesame seeds. Um, so these are all functional ingredients that separate the grains of uh, chickpeas. And then we have ingredients such as onions and uh, radishes and uh, the uh, green chilies right. that Laura was talking about that create moisture. Moisture, right. So it uh, basically <laughs> carries over that moisture, even though it's a fried item, there is a uh, you know, juicy onions, uh, um, radishes, and chilies uh, that basically retain that moisture across time. Everything's really intentional, yes. then, how it, how it goes together. And do you cook the onion? The onions are actually fresh. Okay. And the way that we do it, we use a meat grinder. So okay. right now, you know, everything is being passed through a meat grinder. And the reason why we use, you know, like Saya said, we use the garlic, we use the onions to give it moisture to the falafel. We like to add radishes, you know, that gives a, the journal sequoia, adds a little bit of the bitter flavor right. to the falafel. When uh, you give it a bite, and you, we always, when, whenever we are creating a dish, we think about the finished product. Right. And so we think, okay, this product is gonna be fried. How are we gonna make it lighter? Yeah. And the way to make it lighter is by adding bitter flavors. So we add uh, radishes into it. Oh, I, I, I haven't seen a recipe actually that calls for radishes. With radish. So, and also, you know, the spices that we use are very unique and very special. We use something that's called fenugreek. Fenugreek is Fenugreek, I never yes. use. I never yes. use it. What do you like about you it? You know, we like uh, fenugreek because it gives the earthiness, the, the umami. Mm -hmm. It tastes almost like cooked mushrooms. So wow. whenever you're like, trying to cook something at home. And, a, some, and this is a vegan dish, wow. gluten-free, with lots of flavor that's I'm good in. for you. It's like one of the best spice you could ever have. You can Magical. have it with like, you know, you dip it with your hummus, you can put it, you know, as an appetizer. You can use it in so many different ways. It's just like light, refreshing, even though it's fried. So Beautiful, amazing. Yeah, we can just so put the ingredients we're gonna together. We're going to start combining yes. all of these. And while we do that, I want to ask Beth. I, I had to laugh when we all met. But Beth, this film <laughs> looks remarkable. And it's, it's, when is it showing? Tomorrow at 10 a.m., did you say, at Copia? It's showing tomorrow at 10 a.m. at Copia. Okay. And on Saturday at Charles Krug on five, at 5.30. Okay. I want to say that this is one of the best falafels I've ever had. Oh, oh thank you for real. so much. Oh, it's, so so good. So, it's crispy, it's <laughs> tender inside, and then it has a tang that I'm not used to. That's right. Um, She's getting what's giving it the tang? About. Lemon juice and vinegar as <laughs> it's well. It's really so, amazing. so seasoned. Add depth amazing. with uh, two different acids. That's so, so and great. And I do want to add, because it's, in, it's a topic in the film as yes. well, that you know every country in the Middle East claims that they own falafel, That's right. claims that they own hummus, claims that they own that <laughs> tomato <laughs> cucumber salad that I bet is in Turkey. Right. And um, really, what, that's one of the theme, one of the subjects of the film because the area is known as the Levant, and a lot of people will say, why are we putting labels on this food? Why can't we just call it Levantine cuisine? Right. So. And the other part of your story, I love how you start out and how they speak about this in the trailer, too, is that breaking bread together is a, tra a tradition you two have always you held when they had a pop-up, that that's just how you start the meal always, bringing people together by that's breaking right. bread together. And, um, you know, one of the things that really resonated with uh, what, I, what you said just, Beth, is like this idea of the Levant and the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, you know, we called our restaurant Eastern Mediterranean on purpose. I'm Armenian from Istanbul. Another yeah. conflict we'll explore at another time. <laughs> uh, we can put another day aside. Uh, yes, that, that right? will take a long time to explain. So. Well, but the, the point being, you know, all, uh, you know the, there was, it used to be one cuisine at some point. So that's why we are uh, sensitive to the cultural appropriation. Some uh, folks call us chief diplomats of Nusha in addition to, uh, you know, being chefs there as well. So we mix the cultures, but we don't say it's, you know, Israeli or it's Greek or it's Armenian. We right. just say yeah. it's Eastern Mediterranean. The tagline of the film is hummus has no borders. That exactly. Oh, I right. love yes. it. I love it. This is what's so amazing about food, right? And that, and that story that plays through it, too. We're all, everyone's like, I don't care where he's from. I don't care where you're from. We are coming together to do this. And 
that's what's so powerful about what we do, I think, and that's what you're right. sharing with the world. I mean, and also that's the idea of the dish that we're serving. Uh, so the, believe it or not, hummus with pickles and the pita on the yeah, side this, and the falafel is actually a dish. Uh, that's it is also a dish. A, that's a dish. It's beautiful. Yes. Oh, and is this the eggplant? Uh, that's the eggplant. So you try that. The pickle, like the the big part, is actually an eggplant that's been pickled mm. with with mm. vinegar and have sugar, have salt. Mm. So it has lots of flavor. Uh, we have some turnips. You know, we, uh, we were talking about radishes and the bitter flavors. So the radishes are pickled with beet juice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like create the brightness and the pop right there. And it's, beautiful. It's it's pink. Like whenever you find pink, pink food, food. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like the, and then the yellow, uh, of course, you, we're talking about food and making you feel good, you right. know, after you eat it. So the, the cauliflower is pickled with turmeric. 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 Brilliant. So it's like really good for you. And um, it actually has a story. You want to talk about the story of the dish by itself? And so there's, uh, so this is a, the story of the dish that it's sabich with a khir. We call it sabik, so as to not challenge yeah. everybody's uh, <laughs> palates. In Keep the, it simple. Exactly. Uh, but uh, so there, the Israeli cuisine is all about repatriation into Israel. All the folks who had left the motherland now that are basically returning. Mm -hmm. So this is the story of an Israeli, uh, excuse me, an Iraqi Jew who came back to Tel Aviv and started a cart of sandwiches that are called sabik sandwiches. It was okay. basically all the ingredients that you see on your plate stuffed into the pita. Oh, wow. Uh, and it became very popular. This is probably, like, maybe you could argue that, you know, Israel can't um, own up to hummus or falafel, but this is something that only exists in Tel Aviv, and we're one of the few people that serve it in the United States oh, that's at really the restaurant. Um, but uh, so what I want to talk about for a second is how uh, can everybody sort of see how it's so sort of flaky, like flaky. it's not coming together. Yeah, it's not coming together. Right. It's not like a batter. It's actually right. you can see the pieces of the garbanzos and the pieces of the onions and garlics. So no I, binder. No when, binder. When, at no all. binder. Um, that's right. So that's like one of the things that hold, brings people together as well. And I'm not talking about this in the religious sense, but faith. So every time I go into the fryer with a bowl of uh, uh, falafel. I feel it's going to fall apart. Uh, <laughs> and I say that it's faith that's keeping it actually. Prayer. Prayer. Uh, we will pray for the falafels to come out right. So what's uh, going to keep it? So it's the pressure that you're making it fairly compact yeah, as well. Yeah, that's right. right. Um, I, we basically take, there's a special falafel shaper you can buy on Amazon. Uh, but I'm using a, an ice cream scoop that everybody has in their homes as well. So I um, I, we basically place it as such into a spoon. Okay. And, uh, maybe you. I can take my glow off, but yeah. this is maybe why you have to be a husband and wife team. Takes two <laughs> That's to make why. Things, when, right? Yes. Takes two to tango. <laughs> <laughs> so you put it into the spoon after to shape it, or did no? Well, basically the idea it comes out like in a round shape. And what we do, we just have it in the spoon and then we would drop it into the fryer. Gently into the fryer. That's it. Nothing else. Was and anybody then, here for the last demo? No. Yes. Okay, so we're still having just experiencing slight technical difficulties in that we've got too much power <laughs> running, but the DeLonghi fryer is amazing and is a great household utensil for frying. It's, it's a really right. safe way no, to it's do it. Beautiful. So we're pretending that they're going in there and they then were they come out and they look like this. The ones that you have in front of you were fried at in the a back, higher power in the in, back. In the, sa the same idea. So, so do you always deep fry them or could you shallow fry them in a pan if you wanted? You know, you could I could I, I tried it before, you know, whenever right. you want to make a patty at home you can even put it in a burger that's that's what we do at Bodice. the restaurant you know you can right. use it in many different ways it's so flavorful uh -huh. it has uh, you know it's like so good for you that you can put it in a burger you can put it you know I was talking about like as an appetizer with so good like tahini sauce we make a tahini sauce at the restaurant so with lemon juice and tahini paste and just a little bit of uh, spices. We use sumac in right. that. Oh, sumac, sumac I sumac love as gorgeous. well. And, uh, and that's how we serve it. But uh, you know what? I didn't talk about two uh, like other ingredients and components of the dish. I didn't talk about the the sauce that's on the top, okay. the sabik bowl. Uh -huh. And that was uh, ajika. So you know, we were talking about all these cultures and whenever we want to describe the food and our cuisine, mm. we talk about the Ottoman Empire. 
And, you know, part of the Ottoman Empire was also Georgia and Armenia and the, all the Black Sea region. Right. And that's uh, where the idea comes from of using a Georgian sauce. That's a Georgian sauce that's called Ajika. And what's very interesting about the Georgian sauce is that it has peppers. I was like, what's the, what am I getting on the back? I That's like right. it. It's, it's a heat, but it's not on fire. Heat. That's right. So it's a fermented pepper paste. Okay. And it has walnuts. It's a walnut-based sauce. Very good for you, no oil, no anything like that. Wow. And it has a spice mix that's called cannelli sunelli. And the cannelli sunelli ha uses... <laughs> Say that 10 times. Cannelli <laughs> sunelli. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the cannelli sunelli uses marigold flowers as a spice. Wow. And uses blue fenugreek. Blue fenugreek is a very floral fenugreek. I'm so you know, excited to cook with it. You know, and just, just all of a sudden, you have a hummus with a Georgian sauce. You have a, a chubby pita at, at the same time. You know, so I always say is that I developed the recipe, and I name it after my husband because he's chubby as well. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> ouch. Uh, but, you know, it's just all of, all of that. It's, I celebrated. It's <laughs> There's no ouch. I, he, I, he I'm like rolling with the restaurant. <laughs> He wants to acknowledge that. But no, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the dishes we would feel very proud of is just having that dish and being able to serve it more than, uh, eight, we serve about 800, 1,000 people at the restaurant. That's and remarkable. And they, everybody gets a hummus. Everybody gets a falafel. Everybody wants and it. And we want to just showcase the, the culture and the cuisine. Right. So it, oh, sorry. Go sorry, ahead. Sorry, one of the things that's really exciting, you have to, I mean, I experience this throughout the day because I'm a nerd and I say hi to every table that comes to the restaurant. Sure. But I see a, <laughs> uh, a family of uh, you know, folks from Iran, a family of folks from uh, Greece, a family of folks from Turkey. Like they're just sitting in the same room and they're eating and they're enjoying this. And one of the things I want to celebrate with you all as Californians is like this is probably only possible right now in California, in San Francisco. So that's one of the amazing. things that excites us a <laughs> no, lot. No, thank as well. you, thank you for yeah, the support. Yeah, yes. amazing. I'm really curious too, Steve, what you think of this wine with it. Have you all had a chance to try? What are we serving today? Well, we're serving the uh, BV Rutherford Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Talking about bringing things together. This is the perfect pairing. It's got that beautiful, bright acidity, and brings in lots of different flavors of uh, jasmine, maybe a little white peach little honeysuckle it's delicious. and it really supports these flavors beautifully i, just, I oh, love sauvignon jasmine. blanc but i didn't know if it would hold up yes. to these flavors especially how do you say what you just made the georgian <laughs> sauce yes. i love it together the jika yeah the yes jika, it gets like the floral flavors you know it has marigold flowers in it and the blue fenugreek you know a lot of flower floral a lot of fruity flavors even though you know it's like heavy spice right it just combines and it marries all together so. it's pretty pretty it's, unbelievable it's pretty what do you think of the food with the wine yeah yes. pretty spectacular <laughs> huh <laughs> amazing uh. amazing can you share with us too is this well, let's do the hummus. Yeah, are you gonna yes. do okay great are we making that you as do well? yeah yeah well I'll, I'll just start you can uh, take over one of the things i want to highlight folks one of the things i think gross like it's there's nothing wrong with uh hummus that's on a shelf okay uh, but one of the things uh, that i get excited about is using baking soda this is we were teaching at sf cooking school just yesterday and uh you know it, one of the uh instructors asked us oh my god you're so generous with the information about your food and like you're giving all your secrets away <laughs> but we want you to be able to enjoy it at home as well so baking soda is the secret ingredient in um, everything that you make with chickpeas, whether it be falafel uh, as well as hummus. Why? Uh, I breaks, don't know this. I'm fascinated. Yes. It breaks down skin. So the skin is, uh, I mean, from a digestive perspective right. and uh, making nutrients bioavailable uh, perspective as well, uh, the baking soda basically breaks down uh, things that don't blend well, like the skin of the chickpea. Uh, so that's why to get a you know baby bottom uh, perfectly smooth hummus, uh, you basically need to soak them overnight with chickpea uh, with uh, baking soda. I had baking no soda. idea. It yes. makes a huge difference. Ten grams for a liter uh, for whatever uh, volume of chickpeas Preparation. that you're covering. 
The same thing we do it with the falafel, exactly. by the way, yeah. So what if you're using canned chickpeas versus fresh? I've never used canned chickpeas. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> it's like, what do you do with them then? <laughs> you're going down. Sorry, I feel No, but so sorry. these are fresh that you've soaked in water with yeah. the yes. baking soda. Yeah. Okay, all right. Good yeah. to know, though, because I think a lot of people, you know, if you're doing it at home, you just want to be able to take canned, puree it with a little Which, olive right. oil, well, take it all day, yes. right? I but the baking soda, I did um, not yeah. know. Okay, <laughs> so um, these, in theory, have been soaked. That's right. Okay, got it. Um, and then what happens? So then what do you combine yours with, and what makes your hummus so amazing? Um, do you want to take over? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain to you. So what we do with the chickpeas, we basically soak them, like okay. I said, for every liter of chickpeas. Thank you. Uh, or every kilo of chickpeas, what we do is uh, we put 10 grams of baking soda. Okay, great. And we let it seed They're overnight. They're real chefs, kilos yes, and grams. Yes, we do <laughs> They're kilos weighing and grams. Things. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so just the, the next day we come, we strain the water, we wash them a little bit. So what we're gonna do right here, we're gonna mm -hmm. blend it. It's just a very easy procedure. I love this. Uh, you don't have to mess around too much with a food processor that you have at home, whatever works. We, can right. even, we, we try also in the blender sometimes. Uh, whenever we make hummus at, at, at the restaurant, you know, we make uh, 22 gallons of hummus a day. So it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. You know, it's a whole <laughs> no, process. We can do the it's math a, on it's, that. It's completely different. But yeah, I'll show you really right. great right here. I love this so, brown f food processor we were saying, though. It acts like a food processor, but then it's also a stick blender, which is brilliant. That's Amazing. Right. Super easy. It's, it's so easy to make. Uh, you see, you have the chickpeas. Okay. So after those being soaked, we cook the chickpeas. For how long? So we, straight, so the, we cook the chickpeas for about 45 minutes. Okay. It doesn't take too long until they're really soft. That's but what we want. We one, want the chickpeas. One rule of thumb is to, to be literally thumb. Soft. You want to be able to press the chickpeas and crush them to oblivion you between your two fingers. And how do you cook them in water? Or stock? They're cooked in water. In okay, water. So really Just simple. In water. Yes. Vegan, you said. That's Amazing. right. Yes. Oh, and great. here, this is another secret that we like to share. Why not? So we use garlic confit. Oh, wow. Yes. Do you make it in the restaurant? We make it in the restaurant. Oh, my gosh. Garlic. The flavor. Good, good garlic. Just lots of flavor. Caramelizes a little bit. It oh. just develops so, so many layers of flavor into the hummus. So much uh, different than if you were to use raw garlic. Exactly. I mean, it's in a completely just, different in flavor. Raw gar if you were to use raw garlic, I would try to use it for what you're going to use that day. Right. Because second day garlic is, uh, garlic is great, but second day garlic is not that great. So uh, I would grate it just to what you're going to serve uh, at that moment. I'm picturing one person peeling and cooking garlic all day long. <laughs> exactly. <in a> new... <laughs> it, it's actually a job uh, position that we post on uh, hiring garlic, garlic peeler. Garlic peeler cooker. <laughs> it's crazy. And, and here's another ingredient that I absolutely love, uh, tahini. OK. Tahini sesame paste really creamy it's just so, so many bitter flavors it's just amazing it's just pure it's pure like good fat it's good for you right uh and what we do just to calm down all the intense flavors we add fresh lemon juice okay so always lemon I love the hit of acid, but I always find that citrus, uh, citrus is just a brighter, cleaner right. than vinegar. So if I use vinegar, a lot of times I keep adding citrus to it as well. But this will be delicious. This is going to be great. So uh, just to calm down one more time, the flavor. Oh, oh, hold oh, the bottom for you. Let's yeah. see. We got this. We can figure this out, right? I think. I'll is it on? Yeah, yeah, other direction. Now there we got go. it. All now right. we got it. This is easy. And then you just pulse it right there. Oh, oh that's brilliant. Oh, this is so easy. Okay. So how do you know if the okay you're gonna add more liquid? We're gonna add a little bit of more oil. Okay. Just until it Just starts to move. Together. It gets is that olive oil? This is actually sun, uh, sunflower oil. Yeah. Sunflower, sunflower, very oil. neutral. Yes, exactly. very neutral flavor. Olive oil yes. has an assertive uh, tendency. Yes. So you don't want to taste it. We don't want it. You don't taste. want it to be one of the primary. And the flavors. only spice we use in the hummus, we use cumin. That's it. That's it. Wow. Nothing else. We, we think of our, uh, we use hummus in a couple different ways at the restaurant. It's a sandwich ingredient as well. Right. So it goes into a couple of our sandwiches. A great replacement for mayonnaise. Oh, wow. Uh, and then uh, the idea is that it's a blank canvas. It's beautiful. So, but with the blending, you have to be patient too. Let your machine run and do the job. And, you know, trust that your baking soda, um, you know, treatment and everything is going to work. But you have to allow it enough time. 
to basically turn it into a smooth uh, puree like the ones you had on your plate. And so you can't overwork it, like some There's ingredients. No yeah, you know, when you're working with flowers and potatoes and things like that, you would risk that, but it's just going to get creamier it's and better in texture. Better and better That's right. And uh, you know what? At the restaurant, we serve it cold with a Jika sauce that you had, the Georgian sauce that I was telling you about, but right. also we serve it warm sometimes. Beautiful. Uh, truffles shaved on truffles top. Truffles shaved on top. We have put That's pork amazing. cheeks on top of warm hummus. It's just it's delicious. We make a sauce, a Yemeni sauce that's called soup. We mix it with vegetables. We warm the hummus at the bottom, and then we just put the vegetables with this really bright sauce on top, and with some chubby pita, of course. Chubby, always. Yeah. That, so, that, that's the thing. Everything revolves around uh, you know breaking bread, bread. at our restaurant, too. Uh, oh, so everything starts we'll with turn chubby pita. Can we get Beth's mic turned on so she can say something about the bread? Thank you, Abe. I, I was just going right. to say, uh, I noticed in the Middle East, it's all about the toppings on hummus. It's not right. The hummus is the canvas, and what really is important is what you put on it. It's, right. it's really a beautiful uh, place to start with food, right? But I could, yeah, I could just eat it by the spoonful, which That's I hope it. I get to do. I get to taste it. Beth, you know, I did want to ask you, too, after making this film, which I don't know how long it took you to do this, what was your biggest takeaway from all of this? My biggest takeaway is maybe two things. One is that if you remove the religion and you remove the politics, you're left with the person and, <laughs> and that why you know, that's what it's all about. Right. When you that's what's in the film. These people are just cooking together and enjoying life and people are people. And people so are people. That that was my biggest Takeaway. Takeaway. How long did it take you to make this? Uh, almost two years total. Wow. Oh, wow. I mean, the other thing I would say also is just that, and I think it, it's in the trailer, but it's mm -hmm. in the film that, you know, as Nuf said, she, she says 90% of Israel wants to live together, and it's the 10% that make it to the right. headlines. Oh, wow. But then everybody thinks that the 10% is the 90%. Is the 90. Right. And I feel like that's even anywhere we go. <laughs> everything is so negative, and, and the media focuses on negative. I made a positive film. If you don't like positive <laughs> messages, don't, don't come. come. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that was you. my mission and my <laughs> objective, and I wasn't forced. I didn't have to fabricate it. Right. It just happened. Yes. So, Will you share with them how you met her and how this came about, too? This is what's so amazing about life. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I live in Los Angeles, and I was in traffic, <laughs> and I was listening to the radio, and Dr. Nafa Tamna Ismail had just won Israel's Master Chef. She was the first Arab Muslim to win Israel's wow. Master Chef. Wow. And she was touring, and she was talking about, she was on a mission to bring uh, Jews and Arabs together through food, and I was blown away by her, so I had to find her. And I went back, looked on Facebook. It's a story of the internet. <laughs> so funny. In 60 seconds, we were in touch. And she told me about the Asham Arabic Food Festival that she had founded in Haifa, which brings Arab and Jewish chefs together, where they collaborate on dishes. And I said, we have to do this. It's wow. amazing. We have to make that's it. Amazing. So that's amazing. That's the story. And the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> it was a gift to me. I enjoyed every second of making this film. And if I can share it with anybody, I'm thrilled. Well, this is oh, a pretty way, a special way to bring it to Napa as well. So thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank oh you gosh, for having it's me. It's remarkable. So can I taste this hummus? Absolutely. Too? You know, we were <laughs> missing we a little bit of salts, but you know, yeah, you oh, yeah, we need salt out on, here. Um, the, yes. The one thing I'm always talking about, so I'm I'm curious too, because I always I am the person who does the canned chickpeas. And um, I should thank Whole Foods. I'm a culinary ambassador for Whole Foods. And yeah. I so often, you know, I'm cooking, I'm cooking for work, but I'm also cooking for my family and finding shortcuts a lot. So I end up buying things that are easier to prepare. But I don't think you can cut corners on garlic confit or well, <laughs> doing that, you right? Know it's what? So what we found with garlic confit and what it does is just, you know, you see the flavors of garlic developing, and then you see the caramelization and everything. You can use even the oil from the garlic in whatever right. you have. You know, you can say your chicken or things like that, right? Yeah. It's Be a product that you can just have it in uh, any shelf stable. But also, if you want to have this fresh, you can just remove the confit garlic. Mm -hmm. You shave some raw garlic, whatever you have at home. Right. I mean, you mix it the same day, 
and that's how you have a beautiful hummus with fresh garlic in okay. it. Okay. I would not, never recommend using that hummus for the next day. I thought you were going to say, don't yes. ever go on a date where <laughs> <laughs> well, the use same, the, the fresh same, right? garlic alternative. Just make sure your date is eating fresh garlic. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, these dishes are incredible. And you do all of this at Noosh. Obviously. We do all yes. of these at our restaurant oh in Noosh. Yes, well, you share too. They have the most beautiful saying. What did I read on my little notes about you? How you, they describe Noosh, how it it graphs, what did I tell you? It graphs California roots with, I thought it was so sweet. With California ingredients. So it's an Eastern Mediterranean restaurant, uh, uh, Eastern Mediterranean inspired, California made. I love so, it. That's right. That's uh, the tagline. Th that's the tagline. And that's, uh, you know, our goal with the restaurant. We want to showcase the Eastern Mediterranean flavors mm -hmm. made in California with California ingredients for Californians. So Drinking uh, California wine. That's pretty exactly. amazing. <laughs> I want to ask the audience if you have questions for anyone up here, for, for Beth, for the chefs, for Steve. We're quiet. There's a question right here. Oh, yes. Right. Do we, we have, have recipes? recipes? Is that a question? Stephanie, Stephanie will put it on the Napa Valley Film Festival website. You got it. And if you want to open Noosh one day, uh, let us know. <laughs> yeah, we, we know people. That's right. <laughs> and I will suggest, like, don't be afraid to use the spices. Don't be afraid uh, just to learn, just to go into Eastern Mediterranean, just to try, you know, strong flavors, if you want to call it strong flavors, and just play with fenugreek and cumin, coriander, just everything moderated just comes together beautifully. And you can pair all these beautiful flavors with beautiful wines as right. well. Right. Right? And that's the idea. You know, when we put a food out there and showcase how good food, fresh food, food that's good for you, with like really good flavors using spices. Yeah. It can come, you know, we can put this in a fine dining restaurant. And it, it will go perfectly. I that, think. That's yes. pretty incredible. When, when so, you put it in a fine dining restaurant, you have to call it chickpea puree. It, that's what I love so much. <laughs> These two have the pedigree of working in the uh, best restaurants in the world, and you're doing something to make your food accessible to that's us. That's right. right. I love. You had a question? That's the best hummus I've ever had. Oh, oh thank you so much. isn't thank that? You. A, he said it's well, the best hummus he's ever had. That's pretty. <laughs> Chickpeas. That's right. Uh, well, it's actually dried chickpeas oh, what we use so at, at, at a new They're, show, they're you know. soaked with they're soaked. Uh, baking yes, soda. Yes. Baking soda is the big differentiator. Wow. I, this is going to be my biggest takeaway, I think, from the whole weekend, <laughs> is the baking soda part. Yes. No idea. No idea. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank everybody. I want to make, thank the people who made this possible as well. Monogram, they are demoing between each one of these here on their incredible cooktops and with all of their equipment. That's right. And if you haven't had a chance to check out Blanc Creatives behind us, their cookware, their tools, all of these beautiful handmade Amazing. tools are from them. Gorgeous. From Whole Foods, who brought me here. I'm really, really grateful for that. And Treasury Wines, thank you so much. Thank and you. DeLonghi, and I hope you'll come and ask us any questions. And Beth, thank you so much. And the, thank you. I was just going to thank the Napa Valley Film Festival. And the film? Oh, we're so the, proud of you and, and so the, excited for you. So 10 o'clock tomorrow if you want to go see her. The is 10 o'clock tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Can't wait. Congratulations. Thank you so Thanks much. For Thanks for coming. Thanks all for being here. Enjoy your day. Come back.